Hello friends, happy Friday to you. I'm gonna try to keep this short and sweet. So as you are hopping on or catching the replay, say hello. Don't be one of those people that like watches the whole thing through and doesn't even interact, okay? Help a sister out with her algorithms, with her confidence, right? That's what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about eight ways to become more confident. For those of you who don't officially know me, my, my name is Tamika. Um, I teach stay-at-home moms how to win in life one healthy habit at a time. And I will tell you that it is easier to win in your life when you are feeling more confident. So if you agree with that, type the word agree in the comments and we're just going to dive right in. Um, I sent out a fit tip email. I send them out every Friday. If you click the link in my bio, you can subscribe. But in there, I talked about eight ways to be more confident. And so I just kind of wanted to expand a little bit on those and have a quick conversation with you guys. Okay. So tip number one to be more confident is to recognize your strengths. Okay, so um, I find myself very uncomfortable, have zero confidence in myself when it comes to um, being at a club um, or dancing of any way, shape, or form. Uh, side note, the, the thing that scarred me for life <laughs> when it comes to dancing and rhythm, we had a soccer tournament. I was probably in like ninth or 10th grade down in St. George. And it was a co-ed one. And, um, so they had like this night where it was like, get together, dance, like just hang out. And so I'm like dancing with my soccer friends, my girlfriends. Right. And, uh, one of my best friends looks at me and she goes, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm dancing. And she literally looked me up and down and then walked away. <laughs> and, um, you guys, I literally, I faked an ankle injury. I was like, Oh, my ankle. And I like hobbled over to the side of the dance floor. And I sat there the rest of the night <laughs> because I was like scarred for life. Okay. So dancing is not something that I'm confident in. Um, I'm not confident in history. I was never confident in like reading out loud. I wasn't confident in, I'm not confident in cooking. Right. And so I can sit here and name all of these things that I am not good at, and I'm not going to be confident being put in those situations. And so why do we even think about those things? And so the first tip is to recognize your strengths and be confident in that. Because I know that some of you guys look at me and they're like, I could never be as organized as Tamika. I could never work out like Tamika does, right? And those are my strengths. And when I'm doing those things, I'm confident. And when I'm feeling confident in one area, then I can kind of let that confidence trickle into maybe areas that I'm not as comfortable in. Okay. So like, you know, you'll see me working out and then sometimes there's a good beat that comes on and I'm going to work out to the beat and feel like I'm dancing while I'm working out. And that makes me like, feel like I'm a good dancer and um, feel more confident. Okay. So um, I want you guys to interact. I want you to tell me what is a strength that you have? Like the first strength that comes to your mind, um, when I ask you that, and you know, for me, as silly as it sounds, I would say my biggest strength is being organized. Okay. I love a good checklist. Um, and I feel super confident in helping people become more organized. And so like, that is my superpower. That is my best strength is being organized. Okay. Um, tip number two to become more confident is self care, taking care of you. And for me, I'm way more confident when I'm showered, my hair's done, I put on some makeup, I put on some actual clothes, I'm feeling way more confident right now than I would be if I were going live, like right after my workout where my hair was just like crazy, and I was sweaty and stinky and dirty, like, I'm not going to feel very confident. In fact, even before I went live, I went in my bathroom, and I flossed my teeth. I brush them. That helps me feel more confident. I put on some lip gloss. I put on a little bit of eye makeup. And so even just in the last five minutes, right before I was about to go live, I sat down and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not feeling very confident in this. Like I've got my notes. So I know what I want to say, but like to feel more confident, I wanted to make sure that my teeth were clean and that I looked presentable. Okay. So taking care of yourself, that also includes nourishing your body the way that it needs to be nourished. Cause I will tell you, I don't feel very confident when I'm eating garbage and I'm feeling bloated and like no energy and not good on the inside. Um, sleeping, that's going to help you feel more self-confident. Okay. You're not just like groggy all of the time, but you actually have energy. Um, and then doing things that you enjoy doing things for yourself, reading a book, um, meditating, taking a nap in the afternoon if you need to. Um, but self-care is going to be huge. 
for helping you feel more self-confident. Okay. So that's number two. Um, number three is challenging negative thoughts. All of us have them every single day as you're doing something um, or you're thinking about doing something, your brain is automatically telling you all the reasons why you shouldn't try it, all the reasons why you shouldn't do it. It's recalling all of the times that you failed or you knew someone that failed at that, right? And so you have to learn to challenge those negative thoughts. And so for me, sometimes when that comes in, it's just like, oh, like you would never be good at that. Then like, why wouldn't I? And I'm like fighting with myself. Like I've got like the devil and the angel on one side. I'm like, why wouldn't I be good at that? Why don't I just give it a try? Like, why don't I just do it? And I'm challenging those negative thoughts. Um, the other day we went and did the pacer test for our summer soccer conditioning program. And, you know, I had to tell the kids, I'm like, when your body is telling you you can't or telling you that you're too tired or telling you to stop, you've got to challenge those thoughts and be like, who are you to tell me that I'm not good enough? Who are you to tell me that I'm tired? Like, I'm going to show you. And then you go and show it and you do it. And it was funny because, um, I was doing the, I was doing the pacer and it was Becca, me, and then like three other kids. Okay. And we were like on like number 45 and I was like, Beckham, don't you dare quit. Like, let's go. You got to get one more. You got to get one more. So we got another one. I was like, all right, Beckham, one more, one more. Like, don't let me beat you. Let's go. Let's go. And inside I'm like dying. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so tired. But like, I got to beat my son and like, I got to like motivate and inspire him. And like, I know that we can dig a little bit deeper. I know we can go a little bit further. And so I was like, one more, one more. And then he did one more and he stopped and I kept going. He's like, mom, I thought you said one more. And I was like, don't you know that one more just means one more after the last one that you just did. And I ended up getting 52 and he stopped at 48. And I'll tell you, he's probably not going to make that. He's probably not going to make that mistake again. Um, of letting me beat him because he knows that he can dig a little bit deeper. We can all dig a little bit deeper. So challenge those negative thoughts. That's number three. Okay. Number four is set achievable goals. Okay. There's nothing that can boost your confidence more than reaching a goal that you set. And maybe you might feel like it's cheating a little bit. I don't think it's cheating. Um, but if you can make your first goal, like achievable, like within the first 24 hours, within the first 72 hours, within your first week. And you're like, boom, I hit that. That's going to grow your confidence to go and get the next one, to go and get the next one, to go get the next one. And I honestly, I love this five day drop. If you guys have been following me, you've been seeing it. It's literally five days. And I don't want to say like guaranteed to lose five pounds in five days, but like I haven't met a person yet that hasn't lost at least five pounds in five days. Um, and I lost 7.2, but I just remember it was like, okay, day one, I got to stick to the plan. And at the end of day one, I was like, oh my gosh, I did it. I stuck to the plan. Like, this is awesome. And then day two, day three, day four, day five. And then at the end of five days, I was like, oh my gosh, like I followed a system. I filed, I, I filed, or I followed a program for five days and I got these end results and I feel amazing and I look amazing. And so like my momentum of, of reaching that goal and my confidence like went through the roof. I was like, man, if I can do that for five days, I can do it for five days again. And if I can do it for five days again, then boom, I can do it for a week and a half. I can do it for two weeks. I can keep this, this momentum going with me. And so setting achievable goals is amazing. And you know, here's another thing that I do. I always got myself a little checklist. Sometimes I write down things that I already did that day just so I can check them off. And you know what? Makes me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> the other day I was writing my checklist and I, um, I came and sat down here to do my work. And I was like, all right, this is what I need to do today. And I had already worked out, but I, I for sure wrote down that little box and wrote the word workout. And then I put a check in it. Okay. Drop a two in the chat. If you do that too, um, you know, and that's okay. Okay. Like that's going to help your confidence. That's going to help your momentum. All right. So, um, set achievable goals. That is tip number four. Okay, now we're, we're flying through these. Hopefully you're getting some value. Make sure to click the share button if you haven't already, um, or you can click the three dots and you can save this. That way you can go back and watch it um, and leave me a comment as far as which, which tips have helped you the most. Okay, I'm going to keep going because um, I don't want to make this super long and eight tips is kind of a lot to get through. So here we go. So number five is take risks. Okay, um, I know that that has been one of the biggest things that's grown my confidence throughout my whole entire life is taking risks. And a lot of times the risks that I take, they don't necessarily pay off or I don't necessarily succeed at them, but OMG, I learned so much. Um, and it just gives me that confidence. It's like, you know, 
I can do anything. Like, you know, I, I took a risk and I went um, and took the CrossFit cor course so I could get my L1. I took a risk and got my personal training. I took a risk and, you know, um, went to school at the University of Wyoming, not knowing a single person um, playing soccer and met my husband. I took a risk and got married at 18 and then I got divorced, but I learned a whole lot from that. Um, you know, there's so many different times and I'd love for you guys to comment down below. Um, what's the time that you took a risk and did it end positively or did you learn from it? And, um, you know, either you win or you learn. And so it's winning either way around. But when you take those risks, your confidence is going to go up. And, and like I said, I just don't feel like you can lose when you take a risk. Maybe I'm wrong, but man, some of the hardest, hardest lessons that I've learned in my life have put me exactly on the path that I'm on today. And they've made me stronger because every time you fall and you get back up, you get stronger and stronger and stronger. So I love taking risks. And if there's something on your heart, something in your mind, that's like you've been wanting to do for a while, whether it is like some kind of weight loss journey or starting your own business or um, moving to a new place, like take it, you know, what do you honestly have to lose? And the, you're feeling this way for a reason and you can't possibly grow unless if you step outside your comfort zone. So taking risk is huge. Um, number six is surrounding yourself with the right people, with positive people. Have you ever been around a group of people that are just negative Nancy's and people who are constantly um, talking about the things that they can't do? Like they can't afford this. They can't go and do this. Like, oh my gosh, it is soul sucking. So be around positive people, be around confident people, make sure that the people that you're seeing in your newsfeed, make sure the people that um, you're, that you're listening to on podcasts or YouTube or reading books are like positive, uplifting people who you want to be like, who are going to let their confidence just kind of like ooze into you. I know when I follow people on TikTok <laughs> that are good dancers, I'm like, oh, maybe I can do that. <laughs> and I try and learn the dance. And I put it in like 3x slow mo speed, and I'm like, boom, hit it, boom, nailed it. And I'm like doing my dance or whatever. And um, then when I put it in regular speed, it kind of looks okay besides my facial expressions, which I'm working on. But I know I feel more confident when I'm following people that are confident, when I'm surrounding myself with confident people. Okay, so um, that is tip number six surround yourself with the positive, confident people. Um, number seven is have some self compassion. Um, if you don't like you, then other people, you're not, I'm not going to say other people won't like you because that's not true. But if you don't like you, then you are not going to allow other people to like you. And I've experienced this firsthand. And I know that like a lot of people have been in my inbox, which is why I wanted to address this for my fit tip email is talking about how much they don't like the way that they look. They don't wait like the way that their life is going right now. They don't like their relationships. And, um, you know, it all ultimately first starts with you. And growing up, like I grew up in a predominantly white community. And so being half black was really hard for me um, to know like who I was. And like during the summertime, I never wanted to go out in the sun because I didn't want to get darker. I was just very, very insecure. Um, you know, I had a, a big booty compared to everybody else. Um, thank my jeans for that, right? Some junk in the trunk. <laughs> But you know, those were things that I was very insecure with. And it wasn't until I like learned to embrace it and love myself um, that I could truly allow other people to love me. And, and in order in doing that, I was able to get into a good relationship where I could trust my spouse and um, where I would be okay with being the one that looked different in the room and being okay with my personality and who I was and just knowing that I didn't have to be for everybody. I just had to be for me. And um, so just give yourself um, permission to love yourself exactly where you're at and know that you can also work on those things. Like if you don't like the way that your body looks, there are things that you can do. You know, you can watch your nutrition better. You can start exercising. And I actually created my get fit club just for that purpose. So that women could come together and like, I could give all of the tips and advice and tricks and things that I've learned to help you love yourself. Because until you love yourself, um, you just really can't go anywhere in life. And so I'm very, very passionate about that. So number seven, have self-compassion. And then the last thing, number eight, to help you become more confident is celebrate your freaking wins, okay? Even if you're the one that shouts you out or maybe, you know, um, your team leader shouts you out or your neighbor or a friend or a coworker or somebody, like celebrate your wins. And, you know, a lot of times I feel like, oh my gosh, it's so silly that I like have to 
to have to shout myself out or, oh my gosh, it's so silly that like, I'm still talking about this, but like, it's so important because people need to see you win. Cause when people can see you win, cause you're celebrating your successes, then that's going to be proof that they can do it too. You know, they say that everything's impossible till somebody does it. And so you need to show your journey. You need to share your wins. You need to shout them from the rooftops and be proud of the ways that you're growing and um, that's going to also help your confidence and, and who, who doesn't like two claps or pat on their back from, um, you know, their social media friends or people that they know, like celebrating in their successes with them. So I hope that this was helpful. Oh my gosh, 15 minutes, but eight ways to help you become more confident. And if you guys have any other ways or any other um, ideas or questions, be sure that you comment them below. I'll go back through and answer them. And I just, I just love you guys so much. I'm so grateful for your support and for your friendship. And if you need me, you know where to find me. See you later. Bye.